So, 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 let me see, where's my presentation? It's here somewhere, here it is. PowerPoint, I love PowerPoint, it's the best thing. Because what you can do in PowerPoint is that you can put pictures in PowerPoint, and I love that. So let's see if this works, here's the clicker. So, I'm David, I work as a senior security researcher on, at Kaspersky Lab. I'm responsible for security research in the Nordic and the Benelux region. And as you can see, I did the entire slide deck in Microsoft Paint. And my daughter told me, Dad, you have the best job ever. Because you can travel the world, and then you can go and do some you know, drawings in Paint. And yeah, that's kind of that's what I do, I guess. That's what I do. So I hacked my home. But I have a background. Before joining Kaspersky, I've been doing this for about 15 years. Does anyone know what this is? What have I been doing for 15 years? No, I've been doing pen testing. Hey. And I've also been doing this. And I, I do this actually right now here in Cancun. What's this? What's this? Crazy Swedish guy. Yeah, so I travel the world for two security conferences. That's what I do. <laughs> People think that when you go to a security conference, you will learn a lot of stuff, right? You will learn about offensive techniques, defensive techniques, but no, that's BS. That's total crap. You network and you party. So who, were, who saw any presentations yesterday? How many? One? All of them? Do you remember all of them? No, exactly. Do you remember the party la last night? No? <laughs> That's also good. <laughs> no, the thing is, we think that we go to security conference to learn a lot of stuff, but we don't. We go there to network and we party, because we, if we want to learn stuff, we read blog posts and buy books and stuff. So, I hacked my home. Why did I choose to hack my home? The thing is, we in the security industry, we have a tendency to only talk about what's really cool and what's new. APT attacks, new exploits, new malware, everything that's new, including IoT stuff. I mean, how many, how many people have heard about this? Is there anyone who can see what it is? No, it's a refrigerator. Come on, guys. It's a refrigerator. So when I think about IoT, I think about two main articles. It's one guy who found out that his network-connected refrigerator was sending spam. Had anyone heard about that story? Yeah, Does, is there anyone in this room who has a network-connected refrigerator? You do? Seriously? Famida, really? Ah, oh, come on. OK. Then I have nothing else to say, sorry. No, but we don't really have those kind of futuristic products. And the second thing that we heard about is this. My good old friend Charlie Miller and Chris Valsek, who hacked uh, Toyota, right? We hear about people hacking into cars and hacking refrigerators, but if I talk to my mom and I talk to her about IoT and, and, and security, she don't really care about hacking refrigerators. She cares about the stuff that she has in her home right now, right? And we, as a security industry, we have to become better and talk about what's relevant. That's why I chose to hack my own home. I just bought a new house, and I thought, before I put all this stuff into my house, I just want to see, is, what kind of vulnerabilities do I have in my house? I don't know. So first I thought, we, what kind of devices do I have in my home? And the devices I have is like a TV, a storage device, some DVD players, Blu-ray players, even my Commodore 64 is actually connected to the internet, believe it or not. Also my Amiga and my Atari. But I thought, okay, how do we get all these devices? So we go to a retail shop, and we talk to the salesperson, and we say, hey, I want to buy a new TV. The thing is, they will always try to sell you the TV with most functionality. And today we think, we really believe that buying a smart TV that has Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is actually super cool, because it's the future. How many in here has a TV connected to their Wi-Fi at, at home? And how many of you actually use it? The TV and, and the wireless. OK. A lot of nerds in the audience. <laughs> the thing is, I bought a TV, 
I put it in my home. I was like, oh, sweet, it has Wi-Fi. Connected to, to the, to the Wi-Fi, and I went to, to go on YouTube. And I took the remote, found the YouTube app on the TV, then I tried to search for something. And you know you have this, this number pad on, on the remote. It's like one, two, three, four, five, up to nine and zero. And each number has three letters. Do you know how difficult it is to type like a music video? And you have to type A, B, C, D, E, F. It sucks. It's not convenient at all. So I just stopped, okay, I'll do that some other day, and just kept the TV running or TV configured with Wi-Fi. So everything, I had over 11 devices in my home with Wi-Fi. And I thought, okay, if this is the reaction from the sales guy after I leave the store, because he sold me the TV with, with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, maybe I'm the sucker in this game, right? So hacking my home, what does that actually mean? What does it mean to hack someone's home? You know, I had two different scenarios. One scenario was I could be... I could be in my home, connected to my Wi-Fi, or I could be outside my home, not connected to the Wi-Fi. Was it possible for me to actually hack my home from the outside? That was my theory. So I started to, to map my own network, map my home. What did I have? I had two network storage devices. I had two smart TVs. I had two Blu-ray players and DVD players. I had a network connected printer. I had my Commodores. I had all these different things in my home. And I really thought that as a security guy, I don't have that much, really. So I started to look into these devices. The first one, my network storage device. After 20 minutes, I had remote code execution as root on the device. I thought, this is, this is stupid. This is, this is crazy. It cannot be that possible. The thing is, the device required authentication as well. Um, I, had a, I had an account and I thought, thought, maybe there's some other kind of vulnerabilities in the device. Yet again, after just a few more minutes doing this research, I found the configuration file for this device in clear text available for anyone without authentication. So even that you created, for example, a network share, put all your stuff on the network device, and had it protected with a username and password, it didn't matter because the information was available in clear text. And as the security industry, how many times have you heard someone from the security industry say, you have to do backups? You have to do backup of your computer because you have a lot of sensitive information on your computer. So then you take backup of your computer and maybe store it on the network, uh, the, the storage device. But the storage device itself is more vulnerable than the computer. So I was able to fully compromise this network storage device. So I was happy, of course, and the device got owned. So I, I thought, maybe I'll, I'll do something else. Here's just a small screenshot. I'll show a live demo how I actually compromised the, the device later on. Um, when it comes to the, to the storage device, the vulnerabilities was so simple that anyone could have done it. It was basically taking an argument and executing the argument that you put it, that you entered, as root on the device. That's it. So a total of 22 vulnerabilities on two uh, storage devices. That's quite a lot. I don't know why I have a cat in my presentation. It means nothing. But uh, here's a small screenshot of me downloading the configuration file from the storage device. So my normal setup at home. So I'm that guy. Then I have the internet. And I have a firewall, a normal network router. Inside my, head, my, my network, I have my internal LAN, where I have my computer, my storage device, my TV, and all that. What I wanted to do when I hacked my home externally was simply, let's say, send an email, for example, to someone that has that's connected to the local area network through Wi-Fi or whatever. Because what happens is that our homes, they're like small business services right now. You have a lot of devices in your home, and they're all connected to the same network. How many in this room does actually do some kind of network segmentation? 
of the device. This is the wrong audience to ask that kind of questions. <laughs> but there was one guy, right? One guy. I saw one, one person who does network segmentation between the devices. Not everyone else, right? So the TV can communicate with the source device. The source device can communicate with the printer and so on. But do we actually want that? Do we want that functionality? Why should my network storage device be able to communicate with my printer or my refrigerator? Famita, I don't know. So I sent this email. It could be a link on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And remember how we like, like videos of animals you know, scratching their butt, sniffing the finger, and doing all kind of funny stuff? We like those kind of videos. So I thought maybe I'll prepare a demo for you guys. So what I'm going to demonstrate is how I arrange this website, um, communicate with, with the attacker, somehow send my payload, the pay payload will be executed and I will get root access on my storage device. I'll show you more in detail about what's actually happening. So let's go here, and let's go here. So this is my, uh, my little hacker machine. Can everyone read the, the text? Yes. So I'm using a little tool called Netcat. And this is 100% live, so I really hope this works right now. So I'm listening for incoming connections on port 9090. So this is my hacker machine that's somewhere available on the internet, right? And I'm sending you a link on whatever medium you choose. And when you click the link, you know what? Let's make it more interesting. I'm not doing this right now. So this is my super Night hacker time. tool. Nighttime. Daytime. Look at the left Night side. Nighttime. Daytime. Nighttime. Daytime. <laughs> 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 so it's difficult to see, but on the left side, it says scanning for device, then an IP number. Scanning for device 192.168.1.1, and 1.2, 1.3, and so on. And here it says vulnerable device found. <laughs> dump device setting or backdoor injection. So let's say if I do back dump device settings. <laughs> Nighttime. Daytime. This is my Nighttime. configuration file. Daytime. And in the configuration file, Nighttime. what do I have in my configuration file? Daytime. What do you think <laughs> I have here? <laughs> Password hashes. <laughs> what about this? <laughs> what about me going back to my super hacker tool? <laughs> running my small tool. Do you like the audio? I can tell you, it took me three months to do this research, and I heard this song, or this, this audio, for three months. <laughs> kind of makes me go crazy. Nighttime. So I'm clicking here on back to injection, Daytime. going back to my shell, Daytime. and there we go. Daytime. We now have root access on the device. This is, this is the time for you to applaud. <laughs> So I do have, I fully compromised the device by just visiting the website and clicking the link. But it still required me to click the link, right? I still had to interact with the website. What if, what if I can do this without clicking the link? So now it's scanning in the background. Daytime. Daytime. And let's Nighttime. just wait. Let's wait and see Daytime. if we get a connection. Oh, guys, you can Nighttime. see. Daytime. Daytime. <laughs> there we go. You can see it really. I did nothing. I touched nothing. I just visited the website. While I was visiting the website, I sent the malicious code and we compromised the device. And this attack works from an iPhone, an Android phone, a tablet, a TV, anything. If you visit any page that has this payload, someone will be able to compromise your devices that you have at home, as long as they have any of the vulnerabilities that I found. And this is kind of crazy. You don't have to do anything by just visiting a website, looking at video, or whatever. That's kind of scary. 
So what can I do after I compromise the device? From the TV, for example, I could perform a man in the middle attack. Because it's running Linux. And I could sniff credit card information, passwords, account details. I could pivot my own attacks from the TV to the storage device, to, the, to your computer. What if I was modifying a document that you had on your storage device and injected some malicious code, so when you actually looked at a picture or opened a PDF file from your storage device, it was actually infected with some kind of exploit? The TV had outdated software. It was running a very old version of, of Apache and run, running a very, very old version of, um, um, of the Linux kernel. So what I did to look, actually look into and see if I could do some, something more with the TV is that I injected a picture of Borat. Do you everyone know what, who Borat is? I injected a, t a picture of Borat into my TV. The problem is now that I have a picture of Borat in my TV, which totally sucks. I don't want the picture of Porat in my TV. But I started to look into other stuff. What about my network router? Hidden administrative functions in my network router. This is not good. So here I can see, if I click WAN sensing, I have some options in my menu for the router. But then it's very difficult to see. But it says web cameras. Someone has a feature called web cameras on my router at home. Someone has access to my router and can do updates. I guess it's the ISP, but why should the ISP have access to my web cameras or some kind of settings for the web camera on my router? After I was fucking around with the router, they locked me out. Seriously, they locked me out. I could not access my router again, and they sent me an invoice for 500 Swedish kroner. They somehow found out that I was screwing with this, with this device and sent me an invoice and said, we're going to replace your router because it's broken and here's a new one. I refused to pay that bill. And then they, in Sweden, there's, some, there's like this agency that comes and collects money. <laughs> so this agency came to me and said, hey, we, we want 500 kroner. <laughs> and I said, okay, here's 500 kroner. Because it's just stupid. So what's my, the thing is, what's my point? What's my point with breaking into my home? What's my point? What, what do I want to prove? I don't want to prove that a lot of vendors have a lot of software vulnerabilities. I want to prove a point that consumer products has to support life, size, life cycle about six months, which means that the devices that you have in your home is not going to get updated. It's not going to get fixed at all. I also want to prove a point that the security industry itself, let's see, the security industry itself needs to take more responsibility and talk about what's relevant and what's really important, not talk about how to hack a car or the, only the, the latest APT. We also need to talk about these simple things. And when I reported the vulnerabilities to the vendors, the vendors gave me this response. Thank you so much.